So when I think of the Ionian Islands here in Greece, I think of tall white cliffs, I think of really green islands, I think of mountains running right into the sea, and I think of small quaint little villages located right in beautiful little harbors on the perfectly blue Mediterranean Sea. Now in our time here in the Ionian Islands, we've gotten to do a lot of off-grid stuff, we've seen a lot of really beautiful nature, and this week it's time to visit what is potentially the most beautiful village in all of the Ionian Islands. Sailing has taught me a lot about myself. It's taught me how to learn. There's like a couple things that were just totally missing from my understanding of how to do it. It's taught me how to make mistakes. It's taught me that I'm capable of more than I ever imagined. We did it. <laughs> we can't believe we did it. But this week it taught me that there might be something wrong with me. I'm just kind of like getting very, very anxious. Here in the Ionian Islands of Greece, we have been in one of the most beautiful places that I've ever seen. But it's also one of the most crowded, and I find myself constantly on the verge of what feels like a nervous breakdown. I can't even sit down to have lunch without running back to the boat. And I'm forced to confront a very raw and sensitive aspect of myself, one that seems to make me incapable of enjoying such an amazing place. I see you just getting depressed and like shrinking into yourself. I thought we were coming here to escape the craziness, and I here know. we are, like in the thick of it again. So this morning, I did something that I've been really getting into lately, and that is just getting the boat underway by myself without waking up Desiree and therefore waking up Isabella. It would be really easy for me to just wake up Desiree and get another set of hands, but I just like doing it by myself. It's a lot of fun. It's cool to practice it because it's kind of difficult, like the procedure, you just have to do everything just right, the timing has to be just right. And it's just fun for me to be able to do something like that where Desiree gets some more sleep because she doesn't sleep as much as I do. She breastfeeds throughout the night, she has to deal with the baby more than I do, so that went really well. That was my first time, I think, getting underway by myself with lines ashore. I'm starting to lose track at this point. It's <laughs> starting to run out of first. So anyway, we're gonna be underway for three hours today. We are sailing to the town of Kioni, which is supposed to be one of the most beautiful small towns in all of the Ionian Islands. But because of that, it's very crowded there, or can be very crowded. And since it's August, this is the busiest time of year for boats. So we have a two-day window. Today is Friday, tomorrow is Saturday. Those are the changeover days for the charter fleets that are based out of the Ionian Islands. So Friday, Saturday are the only two days where the anchorages around here aren't too crowded. So the plan is to get in there before 10 a.m. so that hopefully we beat the crowds and we will have a relatively peaceful two days in what I'm hoping is going to be like the most beautiful spot in all of these islands. Bed. Really well, yeah. And then we got to sleep in. Yeah. Which is great, thank you. He's is excited. <laughs> He's is very excited about her brush. <laughs> All right, we are entering Keone and it is very crowded. Okay, so that catamaran is in the middle of leaving right now. So this is our chance, because that's a really good spot. Okay, stand by. Okay, drop. Dropping. Stop. Okay. Oh, okay. We did it. Yeah, I'm just feeling really confident, really good about med mooring now. I think the next step is gonna be doing it to a seawall where we gotta go in between two boats. I think we could do it. Yeah, but you've been taking great baby steps. Good yeah. job, buddy. Yeah, thank you. Nailing it. All right, we're gonna head ashore, check out Keone. We're gonna bring a trash bag of Issa's diapers. This is some of the stinkiest trash we have. We have a lot of trash right now, but I hate taking a lot of trash when we don't know where the trash cans are and what the deal is. So just gonna bring one small stinky bag for now. Reconnaissance trash bag? Reconnaissance. Here, Issa, hold this. You made it, you hold it. Whoa, that is heavy. 
So there's a couple of kind of sketchy stairways that just go up the rocks and the cliffs here. And I don't think there's anywhere good to lock the dinghy. So we'll just row over there. And that way I don't need to worry about not locking anything. Okay, look out. You're good. <laughs> nice. Oh man, there's a trash right up ahead. This is perfect. In Europe, a lot of the time, there's particular trash cans for different kinds of recycling. And a lot of times they're very small with like very small openings. Very rare to find like an actual dumpster like this. So this is the trash jackpot. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think of Keone? Oh, it's super cute. You know, it's funny because when we came in this morning, from the water, I was thinking, you know, I don't see what the draw is really. Like, it's cute, but once we're ashore, it's like cobblestone streets, really kind of lazy summer feel, really, really quaint houses and little alleyways. It's super cute. So I totally see what all the hype is about with Keone. <laughs> what do you think, huh, sweaty lady? All right, so we were just sitting down at our table and I saw a boat trying, I think, back up next to us, but just having a really tough time of it and like trying over and over and over again. So I better get over there just to see what's going on. As I rushed back to the boat, I saw our new neighbors come dangerously close to hitting Atticus on several occasions. But luckily, by the time I got back on board, they had successfully moored next to us without doing any damage. But I was still concerned that they may have disrupted our anchor during one of their multiple attempts. So I rode over to chat with them about it. I, I just wanted to ask, um, do you think that you might have snagged my chain when you were picking up the anchor? He doesn't think we did because he was watching as we went across. I don't. He thinks very clear. Okay, gotcha. Did do you know when you were bringing it up, did it get very difficult at any point? No, Got it, so it was just smooth all the way. I was wondering only because my starboard line was very slack when I got back. Yeah. So I was wondering if maybe it had dragged a little bit since oh, I was down. Hey, no worries. If it doesn't sound like you definitely felt it. Oh then. yeah, I don't think we did. We cool. put it up and down a few times, but it didn't, it wasn't difficult at any point. Yeah. All right, well, situation turned out okay, but they were obviously very new at doing this kind of stuff. I think that in one of their like four or five attempts where they dropped and picked up, they disrupted our anchor, but I power set it and it held. Well, I didn't want to start without you, except I did eat these without you because cold mussels are gross. We've got mussels, beetroot, traditional Greek boiled greens, and fish. Ugh, yeah, my stomach is all in knots. <laughs> I saw you coming over the hill walking with your determined walk, and I was like, oh no. Mm. Mm. Still good? Okay, it makes life better. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, bud? I'm starting to calm down a little bit. I'm just kind of like getting very, very anxious. I know it seems so silly, like we're in such a beautiful place. Right now it's so idyllic, but there's just so many boats coming in and trying things that I thought were so sketchy. Mm -hmm. I like find myself super anxious and tense and then I see people around me like having a wonderful time and I'm like, there's something wrong with me, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I've been justifying that feeling for a couple episodes now. And honestly, I'm, I think a part of it does come down to the whole like exposure. Like we expose ourselves to just more time doing this. Mm -hmm. So the risk for us is higher because the odds that something that will happen negatively to us is higher. Yeah. But I don't think that's the full explanation. I think I'm just a particularly, I feel very uncomfortable uh, when there's these uncontrollable variables that could result in like catastrophe, mm -hmm. you know? And I know that the problem is, is the scenarios that result in catastrophe are like so small, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But I can't get them out of my head. My mind just focuses on them. First of all, like it is our own fault for 
cruising this time of year. Yeah. We knew that it was going to be jam-packed with charter boats. I guess at the moment a necessary evil because we were not on schedule, you know? Mm. But we did everything we could to leave as soon as we could. This is Jordan's worldview, which is like when you don't understand something, you like attack it from all angles until you understand it and you're really good at it. And then only then can you like go out in the world and do this hard thing. Then there's this other dichotomy. It's like, I'm just gonna roll up and try it <laughs> and then leave my boat. And so like these two worldviews are just like hitting up against each other, you know? And so you're you're like, is something wrong with me for being this way? I think you're being too hard on yourself. Like, I see you just getting depressed and like shrinking into yourself and like thinking you're a bad person. I feel protected that you have this anxiety, but I, at the same time, I don't want you to have this anxiety. So if it means we shouldn't be here during high season, like let's get the heck out of these places where there's all these people, you know? Yeah. Not a big deal. You have any last thoughts? Yeah, well, I appreciate you. I appreciate you talking to me about it. I think we should just kind of call it a day <laughs> with the busy parts of, of Greece right now. Yeah. So I think tomorrow, I don't know where we'll go, but I'll find some anchorage that there won't be a lot of people in. I feel like just stop banging our heads against the wall and stop trying so hard to just be a part of this thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Let people that are cool with it do it. And mm -hmm. We'll just do something different. Mm -hmm. So we are getting ready to get out of here. Desiree's in town, we're getting some last minute groceries. A lot of the boats here are leaving and we're trying to do it in a way where no one's anchor grabs anyone else's chain. And it's actually going quite well so far. Everyone's cooperating, which is cool. Oh, so what did we get you? Hey, get out of there. This is my croissant. Okay, it's time to bounce out of here. We got a little bit of a crosswind, but the boats to the left of us have left, so it should be a simple operation, except that there is an anchored boat right in front of us, and I'm almost positive that they're on top of our anchor. And they're an Italian boat, so we'll see how this goes. Poor Italians, <laughs> Poor, lots of We have been told that Italians do weird things with their boats. It's not my words, other people have told us that. <laughs> Okay, okay, bring it in slow. Very, very slow. Sir, do you want to motor forward a little bit? Yeah, keep going, bud. Anchor's at the water line. No chain. Yeah, we're good. Okay, sweet. Okay, that went pretty well. Although I gotta say, man, that dude is like, concerned. could you just motor forward a little and this will all be 10 times easier? He's like, no, no, I've calculated it in my brain <laughs> and we will not contact. It's like, how do you, what? God. Okay, so welcome to Agia Ephemia. It's nice, it's got restaurants, it's got a harbor, there's some protection for this anchorage, but it's also not super popular or crazy beautiful or there's nothing spectacular about it, which is exactly what I could use right now. And it feels so good to be honest to God at anchor, not lines ashore, not any weird situation, just anchor in the water, chain, boat, that's it. So we're gonna hit the town. ordered bread wow. and it's like so big fluffy and warm let's do this oh, all right that's so good <laughs> it is interesting because we've had fried anchovies already in greece but this is cold and like not even grilled i think it's just cured i think it might be raw 
Yeah, I think it's pickled. It's so good. It's very intense though. Okay, and what else did you get, Ben? I got stewed veal and onion sauce, and it's really, really good. Man, bed wall, I'm feeling stuffed. Yeah. And comfortable. So full. Like it's such a nice yeah. little breeze coming. Mm. We've got such good protection. It's a cute little town. Mm -hmm. And the anchorage is filling out, but no one's too close to anybody, which is so great. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing, Chubby? Who are you calling Chubby, Dad? Like, I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm going to eat you. All right, it is project time. So today I'm going to be installing this really cool piece of equipment called a passerelle. Basically, this is like a plank that allows us to get from the boat to a dock when we're tied up stern to. Particularly the reason I wanna do this is tomorrow we are going to start to make our way south around the Peloponnese Peninsula. But before we can start making our way around, we really need fuel. Most people here take on fuel by backing up to a dock and then ordering a fuel truck. We've actually got a fuel truck scheduled to meet us at Sammy Marina, not far from here, tomorrow. So we need to get this passerelle installed so that we can head to that marina so that we can take on fuel so that we can get the hell out of here. Well, I'm gonna pause my project for a minute because this catamaran anchored next to us earlier and then the wind shifted and they're on like a super short scope and we're on kind of a medium length scope and now we're super close to them, of course. We were just way too close to this catamaran, so I decided, rather than asking them to move, to just re-anchor further away from them. But after we dropped the hook, we noticed that a frenzy of boats were entering the harbor, all trying to anchor at the same time, and the anchorage descended into chaos. Okay, so that guy is now bringing his anchor back up, which is too bad because I liked where he was, he didn't affect us. I think he was too close to that boat. And the green boat and this boat were the ones that were yelling at each other a second ago. What do you think, buddy? It is crazy. Hashtag Ionian life. I mean, I thought we were coming here to escape the craziness. And I here know. we are, like, in the thick of it again. Dude, this person is a crazy person. He's just doing donuts. So now these guys were bringing up their anchor, and now I don't know what they're doing. What they have successfully done is gotten a little bit closer to us now. I think what happened is the people behind them complained, and they were like, dude, get out of here. Oh my God. It's hard to explain the level of anxiety, you know, that just happens out of nowhere. Like the wind's howling, there's boats coming in, there's people yelling at each other. There's people doing like spastic boat movements and you hear their engines revving and you see the Yeah, going donuts. way too fast. I'm yeah. just like, what is happening, <laughs> you know? All right, back to the project. God damn it. I didn't get exactly the middle of the inside of this hull to deck joint. I forgot to incorporate the fact that the hull on the outside is cord. So this wall, the outer wall, is thicker than the inner wall. And so I just went in between the outside of both walls, but this side comes in further. So because of that, the hole is too far outboard. And when this goes in, there's a gap here it gets pushed and kinked a little bit okay well i just had an idea and it's for sure a bad idea but i'm gonna give it a shot my idea is i'm gonna hit this thing with a hammer yeah uh that that didn't work at all <laughs> yeah i think that the amount that this is off is not unacceptable so i think i'm just gonna install it a little bit tilted and let the sealant kind of fill in that gap and then at some point in the future we can pretty it up and fix it good about this there's just a lot to hold on to so that I feel like we won't like fall and hurt ourselves getting on and off the boat so that's good I like how it's connected it's very strong and secure and just not going side to side or anything so yeah we're ready tomorrow to head to the marina take on some fuel and then we can 
get the hell out of here and I can start to regain my sanity a little bit. <laughs> Give us a hand with lines over here. Yeah. Great, thank you so much. Uh, our port side. Okay, well, that went really well. It's crazy. That's something that would have been really difficult for me just a couple weeks ago, but that practice that I did with Ben lets me back this boat up now. It's so exciting. Now there's zero wind. Would have been harder if there was wind, but yeah, that was great. I'm very happy about that. What do you think of the passerelle, bud? Very snazzy. It looks like, kind of precarious, but it's really solid. You yeah. know, I feel pretty safe going across with my big bowling ball. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, good job, I feel like that's gonna serve us well here in the med. Yeah, you did a great job. Once we were all fueled up, we were ready to say goodbye to the Ionian Islands. But first, there was one last thing we wanted to see the Melisani Cave. And I was excited to learn some interesting facts about the cave from our tour guide. Let's see what he has to say. You can see water, it makes you water. I started to get water from the other side of the island. Water is very clear. Well, it, at least it's a very beautiful place. Yeah, the water looks fake, it's so clear. Oh, it's been cool down here. I just got dripped on. Then you look up above and there's all these stalactites just like hanging down. This week I wrestled with the idea that there might be something wrong with me. And I think there might be. I seem to really dislike situations that many, many other people find enjoyable. But I think that what I've learned through this experience is that maybe I shouldn't fight that fact. Maybe instead of changing what I dislike, I should just pursue what I love with even more fervor. I find peace in remote places. I find calmness when I'm challenged by the sea and by nature, and so that's where I'll go. I'm just lucky that I have a wife who enjoys the same things, and I'll do my best to teach that kind of joy to our growing family. 